Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to fly the Milvis slash Blackbird Sim Cessna 310 from Portland International to Chico and I'm starting at the same gate that I left off in my previous flight with it and so this is gate C19 as it turns out but uh, I was I was hoping for a parking spot but I accidentally clicked for a gate and we are going to do the cold and dark start but I won't belabor things in this video I'll try and expedite the editing but I'm going to go through everything of course and right now we're just gonna check on the status of the plane and inspect there is a update pending I think to it I'm not sure but uh, anyway everything looks fine enough except for the spark plugs which is the way we left it uh, I had decided not to repair the spark plugs just yet we'll try one more flight as they are and it is all owned all the realism occasionally failures okay so we are gonna top off the fuel well we have to start okay Okay, left engine seems to be started. Okay, both of them seem to be started. Passenger comfort index is good. I'm going to put away the pad. Alright, well, we can taxi. Uh, let me just see. Oh, I can probably turn. <laughs> Things you know, run up. Uh, yeah, well, I can probably turn here. Oh, there's an airliner there, though. Let's be careful. I'm probably gonna wear out my brakes. They were pretty worn last time. All right, okay, well, let's ask for permission and everything. Okay, we are requesting taxi to depart south. So, one addition I have now is FS Realistic which is uh, in Flight Sim external app as opposed to how it was in X-Plane where it was integrated into the system you didn't have to start something else but here for Flight Sim FS Realistic has to be started separately and it adds various sound effects and other effects that are quality of life things okay. they're not worried about me right now So a lot of the sounds, of course, uh, Milbiz slash Blackbird Sim had plenty of sa uh, sounds for this plane already, so I don't know how much it's sort of overlapping or unnecessary for this particular plane. For other planes, of course, it helps a lot more. Why do we have these vans here? Okay, continuing taxi. Roger, Ray Eyes, left Ray Eyes, Romeo, Alpha, 412. Okay, here we go. Take off. We are over Portland again. Everything looking spiffy. I wonder what that little building is there in the middle of the five baseball diamonds. That's a nifty little complex with five baseball diamonds right there. I will take the opportunity to fly over the bridges of Portland again. Alright, and we're heading south through Oregon to Northern California. And we've got the autopilot set and everything. It'll be a nice, comfortable ride. I am flying with real world weather, but it's not the real time. And that's because it'd be quite late and dark out if I was flying in real time. Cabin is comfortable and steady. 
Yeah, I think that'll be my story for this. We're basically flying pilots home for their leave days. It's sort of a, whatchamacallit, a, a holiday thing. The airport that we see right there is Aurora State, K-U-A-O. In uh, X-Plane 11, I think I landed there during, uh, I think, uh, my air hauler career. If I recall correctly. I wish I had air hauler for flight sim, but I didn't want to pay for it full price again. It's pretty pricey, it's like 50 bucks. I had already gotten it for X-Plane 11, so... It doesn't work with X-Plane 12 as far as I know. So, a sad thing there. Oh, we need to uh, control our icing. I'm just saying to 2,400 feet, I feel like it's mainly flat around here. And we do still want to get a better look. Of course, it's not great for fuel, but uh, we are probably doing okay on that right now. Oh, great. And now there are clouds. Okay. Let's see. Okay, we are approaching Salem. In fact, we're right over the airport practically. There is KSLE. McNary Field. And that is Salem, Oregon. Highway below us is Interstate 5. But actually what we're following is Highway 99. It just so happens that at this point, Interstate 5 and Highway 99 are the same road. Okay, well, we're a little bit off from Eugene, but we're basically over part of it. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm still over I-5, so this is Eugene. I trust we have just crossed over a junction that's between I-5 and I-105. So that was Interstate 105 crossing Interstate 5. And that is part of Eugene behind us. Although I think... Uh, well, there's definitely a stadium there, so that is probably closer to downtown Eugene, over to the right there. Uh-oh, we need some windshield de-ice. We had some precipitation, I think. Okay, let's try this one. Windshield heat. Okay, well, all clear now. I swear it was more thanks to the wing ice lights, which says de-ice, than uh, windshield de-ice. Either way. Let's see. Well, cabin is comfortable and steady. That is our situation right now. About one and a half hours left. And we are at 5,000 feet. But that mountain in front of us seems a bit high, doesn't it? Roseburg is over to... It's... Uh, yeah, I think I'll deviate from the plan a bit because Roseburg is a little bit further west. So, I'm gonna turn a little bit west. Even though that's deviating from the current flight path. It's probably safer. It's in the valley that I-5 is in. Well, we're not going to see much of Roseburg with the uh, weather here. Yep, not a particularly good day out right now. Maybe we'll get some gap in the clouds to take a look at the city. I think that's Roseburg. That's Roseburg. We're getting a very brief view of it. But it's there.
Alright, well, nice of the clouds to cut us a break there. Alright, well, onward. We gotta readjust our course here. We are headed to Medford. There aren't any special points of interest on this particular flight. We got a bunch of them from Seattle to Portland, but uh, not on this on this leg. But we will be passing by Mount Shasta, which should be a nice view. And we have these various cities in Oregon and Northern California to take a look at. Uh, we'll be passing by Redding, which is a photogrammetry city, in fact. Our destination, Chico, is also a photogrammetry city, it seems. At least that's what it says on the map. Well, we have some ice on the wings now, that's for sure. Um, Alright, wing ice lights. Of course, any ice associated issues will be fascinating. bit of ice build up on the engine too. Oh yeah, we are getting frosty here. We are currently right next to Grant's Pass. And I guess we can sort of see it over there. Well, that's some of it. Grant's Pass along Interstate 5 of course. And we are turning east now to get to Medford. We have lots of frostiness now. That can't be doing great things for our airframe reliability or performance. Um, I do have the, that de-ice and this windshield heat de-ice. There's no alcohol. I don't know about this de-ice boots. I guess we surface. Ooh. Oh, that did something in a hurry on the leading edge. Okay. I guess maybe the leading edge is all we can ask for on that one, but I'll take it. We've got a lot of mountains around here. The prop the ice makes a sound like that for some reason. I don't know what that sound is. I imagine it's something to do with FS Realistic and maybe not the Milvis sounds, but maybe it's a Milvis sound. I don't know what it is. I don't know much about the ice mechanisms, to be honest. So, still with I-5 winding uh, its way through Oregon here. Which town is this? Rogue River. Rogue River is below us. Alright, the clouds have cleared up a bit. And that is Medford, Oregon in front of us. And we have to turn to... Return to our path. Hopefully we'll warm up around here, I don't know. Oh, there are those cold mountains in front though. Let's see. Outside air temperature still looks like below zero there. Celsius. Alright, so a clear view of an Oregon city for once, Medford, Oregon. Headed towards Ashland. Well, a bit of a winter wonderland in front of us here. Nice snow. Yeah, we're we're not thawing around here. <laughs> We'll be taking a turn at Ashland, basically continuing to follow I-5, of course. And soon enough, we will be in California. Uh, 
Okay. Getting over this ridge barely. Soda Mountain Wilderness here. And we're basically at the border between Oregon and California. Sort of an interesting peak over there to the left. Got extra trees on that. Well, maybe that's Pilot Rock. Porcupine Mountain might be off to the side. Makes more sense that that's called Pilot Rock. You can see how I got that name. Not a point of interest or anything, I'm just seeing the name of the peak in the map. Now it's a straight line border between Oregon and California. It's not based on physical features. So you won't really notice it, but we are now in California. Or over California. And we are on our way to Yreka, not to be confused with Eureka. Okay, we are over Yreka Airport. Yreka is well, it's somewhere over there. <laughs> um, it's covered in ice, apparently, or snow. I guess. Uh, oh, Montague. That town is called Montague right there. Anyway, that's the airport. That's Montague. And yes, apparently, Wairika itself is camouflaged in the snow right now. I think we might be marginally thawing. I'm not sure. So cold out. Okay, Mount Shasta, though, uh, cockpit brace is in the way. There we go, Mount Shasta and Shastina. Okay, now we've got a good sight of Mount Shasta from inside. And yeah, it looks like the wing is flying. So is the engine. I don't know how that works, because outside air temperature still looks below zero, but if I guess if it doesn't have precipitation or something, maybe? I don't know. Well, Mount Chasta is obvious. Uh, what is this peak to our right, exactly? Black Butte. That is Black Butte, I think. Mount Shasta is 4,322 meters, Shastina 3,758. All right, we are approaching Shasta Lake. The actual mountain is pretty far behind us now. And that is the lake. Looks like Mount Shasta is a bit cloud shrouded right now. But here is the lake. Alright, the city of Reading, and apparently a photogrammetry city, though. I mean, we'd have to take a really close look at those houses to be sure. I trust they're very uh, accurate. I mean, from here, I don't know. Does that look like photogrammetry to you? Some of those look really generic. Maybe... Maybe it's some stuff, I don't know. Anyway, we're still too high up to appreciate it. I think we're still about 4,000 feet. The river flowing through Reading is the Sacramento River. I-5 continues on below us and probably I have to turn then, huh? Yep. We appear to be all thawed out now. So I guess I'll switch off all of the ice stuff. This is the town of Red Bluff. Next up will be Chico, our destination. And actually, it's uh, here that we depart from 
Interstate 5. We've been following Interstate 5 the whole time, but it's at Red Bluff that Interstate 5 is no longer paired with uh, Highway 99. They are finally two different roads <laughs> at this point, and we are now following Highway 99 instead. Uh, I missed the junction though. That was back there somewhere. Basically, Interstate 5 manages to systematically avoid all cities until it gets to Sacramento, whereas uh, Highway 99 actually encounters the cities between Red Bluff and Sacramento. Chico is actually south of the airport, so we'll fly, fly past the airport, take a look at Chico, and then land. Okay, taking it off of autopilot. Well, I hope it doesn't surprise anyone that Chico is in fact very agricultural. There's probably way too many trees though. I wonder if I can see the Costco somewhere. So, yeah, it's supposed to be full of granite tree and it's uh, looking, well, it's looking like it might need to have some sprucing up, but we will see what we can see here. That the trees are sort of in the way. This is Highway 99 below us, apparently. Or is it? No, maybe not. Oh, uh, wait. Other road over. Hold on. There's the trees, and then there's the photogrammetry trees in the midst there. Okay. Alright, well, the area around Highway 99 seems to be a little bit clearer of trees. So that's good. That's Highway 99 up front. Um, can we see very specific details around? Costco? Can't tell. Well, with these towns, I, I don't know if photogrammetry really brings them out very well. Okay, well, that is Chico, everyone. And I'm going to head towards the airport. Maybe on the way out on the next flight, we'll take another look at it. If I remember, I'll pre-cache it just to see. Alright, I guess I better ask permission to land or something. Alright. Okay, coming in. Welcome to Chico, everyone. Okay, well, taxi to parking. Chico Ground Reyes Romeo Alpha 412 request taxi. Oh, it's right there. Oh, we have to go around everything, including a very pink plane. Seems like delivery didn't quite work out on that one. Okay. So noted. I think that uh, that was uh, installed modded delivery. Oh, this part of the thing doesn't seem paved right. Interesting. There's a van in my way. And other vehicles. It's like an obstacle course over here. I guess I'm on the opposite side of the messed up DA-62. Oh no, it looks fine now. It's just the long distance one. It is a modded livery. Telling me the truth? Okay, I think that'll be fine. Okay, fuel selectors off. Passenger comfort index is negligible, but I guess that's because the passenger. Nope, passenger's still here. 
Okay, well, I don't know why it says cabin is comfortable and steady, but maybe I landed too hard. Control lock. Okay, so that should be it for those procedures. And so I can turn off the battery. Oh, the control lock is there. I actually want to turn off battery and then do the control lock. We are still clean. And our status, we can inspect. It's always the brakes. The brakes are always a problem. Otherwise, the spark plugs didn't do too badly this time. Okay, well, we have once again replaced the brakes. Alright, so that was the flight from Portland to Chico. We are here at Chico at a proper parking spot, and I will wrap it up here. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment, se comment section below, and I will see you next time.